Welcome in to OutKick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you have been having a fantastic week while I've been hanging out down in Mexico. As you can see, I came back still with spectacular hair. The cartel didn't get me. And I've got a pretty decent tan, if I do say so myself, particularly for February. Just uh, about 20 minutes ago, uh, the affidavit describing what happened with Mr. Robert Kraft went public and I will read it to you at this point in time. Uh, he got a rub and tug, maybe a little bit of blowjob action, at the, uh, at the uh, Orchid Spa down in uh, the Palm Beach area, allegedly, in Jupiter, Florida. Uh, the allegation is that this took place on the day of the AFC Championship game which was played in Kansas City. Everybody deals with pregame jitters differently. If you are Robert Kraft, 77-year-old owner of the New England Patriots, you might decide to get a little bit of action. So here's what happened. And I'm going to talk about this in a larger context right after. Uh, I hope this story has a happy ending. Uh, Robert Kraft, wearing a dark long sleeve shirt, blue baseball cap, blue shorts, and uh, driving in a car, uh, said that uh, approximately at 10.59 a.m., uh, Robert Kraft entered the business through the front door where he paid cash at the front desk to an Asian female previously identified, which was captured on camera 5. This woman then escorted Kraft to a room identified as Cam 2. There the two hugged each other and Kraft took off all of his clothes, laid face up on the massage tailor, uh, table and hugged uh, hu the woman hugged him again. At approximately 11.02, three minutes after entry, uh, this woman began manipulating Kraft's penis and testicles, then put her head down by his penis. This went on for several minutes. After a few minutes, sounds like a blowjob, after a few minutes, uh, she then wiped Kraft in the area of his genitals with a white towel, helped him get dressed, hugged him again. Kraft gave this woman a $100 bill plus at least one other uh, unidentifiable bill and he left the room at approximately 11.13. All right, 77-year-old Robert Kraft demonstrating the efficiency that has long characterized the New England Patriots particularly in their two-minute offense rolls into the massage parlor at 10.59 gets a blowjob rolls out of the massage parlor at 11.13 giving himself plenty of time to hop on his private jet and fly to Kansas City to cheer on the Patriots in the AFC Championship game against uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. If you happen to be one of the people who are out here and you, uh, and you complain about what the topics are, all right? If you complain about what the to topics are, then you are blocked forever, all right? I choose the topics. I am judge. I am jury. I am executioner. This is how OutKick the show works. If you don't like the topics, you can leave. You are gone forever if I decide to look over and see what you are saying. All right? Uh, so, this is the biggest story in sports whether you like it or not. The $6 billion owner of the New England Patriots being caught in a prostitution scandal is a big story. Uh, and on top of that, here are a couple more details. That is how everything rolls itself out here. All right? So, couple of things about this story and I said this on the morning radio show and I will reiterate it now. I believe prostitution should be legal, period. Okay? This is the bigger story that I think is going on here. What has consistently happened in American life is when we have tried to prohibit actions which large percentages of the population want to engage in from an economic perspective we end up causing more problem than problems than we actually solve, i.e. with low-level drug offenses, with pro uh, prohibition back in the day when we tried to stop people from drinking alcohol. If a consenting adult wants to pay another consenting adult to engage in sexual activity, I believe it should be 100% legal. I think you should get a license. I think you should be subject to review. I think you should be subject to, uh, to make sure that this is not going on, that it's not turning into a, uh, a, a market that is underground in the economy. There were billions of dollars are circulating uh, and we're not taxing it and we're not ensuring that the people who are involved in it are safe 
either the customers or the women who are engaged in this trade. It is the oldest business out there. The reason why it is the oldest profession is because the market and demand for sex has always completely exceeded the, the uh, supply of sex. All right? Anybody who wants to be in any business you want to sell something that there is a greater demand of than there is a supply of it because that's how you drive the price up. All right? The demand for sex from men is much higher than the supply of sex that is provided by women. As a result there is a huge market for prostitution of all different stripes, sizes, and varieties. My opinion my opinion is this should be legal. The same reason I believe sports gambling should be legal. Same reason I believe that, uh, that alcohol should be legal. Same reason that I believe pot and other low level uh, drugs which are not going to kill you when you use them I believe that all of those drugs should be legal as well. I think and this is what I talked about on the show this morning I think it's much weirder to me for a police officer who is a, 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 a member of law enforcement working for our tax dollars to be sitting watching a video of someone getting jerked off or getting a blowjob and taking notes on it is much weirder to me than somebody getting a blowjob or somebody out there paying for a hand job or a massage. Think about the weirdness factor. Which to you is weirder? A grown man watching on video secretly another grown man get jerked off or the guy getting jerked off. All right? Now, some people say, well, there was sex trafficking involved. First of all, I don't think there's any way Robert Kraft knew that sex trafficking was involved here in the same way that you probably don't know if you go into a restaurant or if you're building a home whether every single person in that restaurant is a legal citizen or every single person working on your home is a legal citizen either. I think Robert Kraft was just going there because it was convenient because it didn't cost very much and because he was able to get in and out as we saw in about 14 minutes. Okay? So as a result I think this story probably Robert Kraft's going to have to pay a fine to the NFL something similar to what happened to uh, Jim Ursay back in the day. I think he'll probably be suspended for a certain number of games and I think that is how uh, that story will officially be put to rest. I hope again that it ends up having a happy ending. But let me tell you this. The man is 77 and he is a widower. His wife died. Remember the quote from Charlie Sheen. Why does he pay for sex? Charlie Sheen said, I don't pay for sex. I pay for them to leave. Lots of men like anonymous sex. Most women do not. And as a result, men who like anonymous sex oftentimes don't want to have long-term relationships with, uh, with uh, the women that they are involved in. I just think this is not a surprising story. I think the big story that should come out of this prostitution should be legal. Now, sex trafficking angle, part two. So people say, well, some of these women are being sex trafficked. They're not making voluntary decisions. Well, if that's true, here's my question on this investigation. If you believe these women are being sex trafficked why are you not immediately freeing them? Why are you deciding to watch them continue to be sex trafficked instead of immediately freeing all of these women? Right? If you found out that a huge group of women were not allowed to leave a massage parlor and that they were effectively slaves inside of this massage parlor why would your response be well let's see if we can catch some guys paying to get a rub and tug? Why would your response might not be we need to immediately arrest all of the owners here and every high level person who is involved in this sex slavery and free all of these women immediately? It doesn't make sense to me why the police are conducting multi-month long investigations if there are women who are sex slaves inside of this business. That's a big question that I think somebody should actually have to answer for and I don't know uh, why that is. Okay? Here is my further thought. I believe that American history has consistently told us and shown us and proven time after time 
that the way to clean up illegal activity is to legalize and tax it. Prohibition is a perfect example. Before prohibition when you couldn't buy alcohol when you couldn't drink liquor in this country there was a huge black market that existed that was filled with violence. People died from drinking unsafe alcohol because it wasn't regulated and there wasn't safety connections associated with it. I believe that if we legalize prostitution what you would rapidly find is that much of the sex trafficking industry would disappear and you would be able to have a safer and more, uh, and more productive American society. Final question. If you are a feminist like I am and I say I'm a feminist because I think women should be able to do whatever they want. If you are a feminist like I am why would you be able to argue a woman has the right to choose whether or not she has a baby but a woman doesn't have the right to choose whether or not to take money to have sex with a man? Think about the logical flaw there. If you believe women have the right to control their body one of the things that a woman has the right to do with her body is sell her labor sell her labor for sex if it pays better then selling her labor might be to work at Walmart or to deliver packages for FedEx. If you believe that a woman can choose when and where she wants to have a baby which I do, I am pro-choice how can you also not believe that a woman has the right to sell sex to a man if the man wants to buy it? Or vice versa by the way. If a woman wanted to buy sex from a man then I think that would be perfectly fine as well. I think it is a huge strange world that we have created where there are people that we pay their salary as taxpayers to try to entrap other citizens for doing something that two consenting adults seem to be agreeing to. I have said this for a long time. If there is a businessman sitting at a bar having a drink and a good looking woman in a tight dress slides up and sits beside him and then that woman lets him buy her a drink and eventually he says hey do you want to come up to my hotel room? She says well I don't do it for free I need a couple of hundred bucks he says okay let me give you a couple of hundred bucks boom he's then charged with solicitation that my friend is to me the definition of entrapment. I don't want incidents like that to exist. Uh, I don't think it makes any sense at all. Okay? That is exactly what I believe. That's my opinion on the Robert Kraft story. I believe prostitution should be legal in this country. Don't have to agree with me. Don't have to think that I'm making logical sense. Certainly there are arguments to the contrary. My belief consistently across sports gambling across, uh, across prostitution across alcohol across gambling in general is legalize vice and allow it to happen. Alright, Jussie Small. It's a big story guys. I think this Jussie Small at being caught in a lie is a massive story that is to me uh, reverberating across our entire American society because I talked about supply and demand when it came to sex. There is a higher level of demand for sex than there is a supply for sex, right? There is a higher level of demand for overt white racism against black innocent victims than actually happens in this country today, okay? We are seeing one racial hoax charade after another. Michael Bennett claims the Las Vegas police uh, profiled and mistreated him. Video comes out it's not true. LeBron James claims there's a racial slur on his gate. The Los Angeles Police Department drops their investigation after finding no evidence to support it. The University of Missouri nothing has gone wrong nothing has happened on that campus. There's a hunger protest a bunch of people get fired. When you actually go and investigate what took place on the campus nothing occurred. Jussie Smollett there are hundreds of fake hate crimes that have been alleged in this country in the past several years. The demand for racist hate far exceeds the supply of racist hate particularly when you are focusing on 
white racism directed against innocent black victims. Not saying that it doesn't happen. There are still racists out there. But when stories emerge like Jussie Smollett and you hear all of the details and you think to yourself this would be the best thing that ever happened to this guy's career it's important to be skeptical and not immediately believe that the story is true. The best thing that could have ever happened to Jesse Smollett's career is that two random white guys attack him because he's black and because he is gay. It's literally the best thing that could have ever happened to his career. We deserve, I believe, to instill a great deal of skepticism on stories such as these, okay? This Jussie Smollett story is a mess. An utter and complete mess. And the way that the media covered it is a flaw. I think it's all directly connected to this Covington Catholic story that also blew up. If you are a white male Donald Trump supporter in 2019, the media wants you to be evil and racist and they are so biased against you that they blow past all the procedural safeguards that should exist. Instead of providing honest coverage, a degree of healthy skepticism, Jesse Smollett, while he might have been an idiot in the way that he set up this event, was not an idiot in the way that he was able to manipulate the media. He knew that he would immediately become a victim and everybody would rally to his side and he would make a lot more money and he would ascend to the peak of the victimization pyramid. I wrote 6,000 words on this story and on Covington Catholic. Go read, I'm telling you right now, go read outkick.com, read that entire article, share it with your friends. It is an indictment of the modern media era that we live in today. Okay, if you have not read that article, and I'm curious, how many of you have read the article? Say yes if you have read the article. No if you have not read the article. I'm curious how many of you have gotten there already. Tens of thousands of people, go read it and you will learn, I think, an awful lot about this situation. And if you have read it or you haven't read it, when you do, share it with other people that you think would enjoy it as well. There is a lot there to dive into um, and I appreciate all of you who have read it who are saying yes. If you are saying no and you like me at all and you like this show at all, you need to go read it. Uh, trust me, it's a really substantial story. All right, I'm about to have to go jump on television here. Uh, but a couple of things that are substantial here that I want to hit. Major issue. Major issue going on right now in the SEC with an LSU fan ref who is pictured on social media in LSU gear who wore an Alabama jersey when LSU beat Alabama who grew up in Baton Rouge. He made 44 calls during the course of the LSU-Tennessee game that went into overtime. 29 of those calls 29 of those calls were in favor were in favor of of the LSU Tigers meaning that the way that this story broke down all right, the way that this story broke down is an utter disaster all right, everything about it is an utter disaster um, for the SEC as more of these details come out it appears that the fix may have been in in this game if you have not seen it Go check out my Twitter handle. This is an ugly look for college basketball. This is an ugly look for this ref. This is an ugly look for the SEC as well. A couple of other quick comments here. Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Bradley Cooper may be the most attractive man that exists on the planet right now. Pretty unbelievable to see Bradley Cooper decide he wants to take up singing and then dominate that from a singing perspective. It is incredible. I don't know how Bradley Cooper's girlfriend set through that performance with Lady Gaga last night. It was unbelievable 
to see that he suddenly has decided that he wants to add singing to his repertoire. He is one of the five most desirable men alive on the planet already and then he went and added singing. Not a good situation there for the rest of us in the heterosexual universe. Um, finally, uh, and I got to go, sorry, I got to get on the television show. Ole Miss. This concept of player kneeling is so utterly broken, okay? Ole Miss players were upset because there was some sort of rally going on near campus. And so they decided to kneel for the national anthem. Evidently, it was a rally in support of the Confederacy or Confederate uh, uh, insignias or whatever it was. And they decided to make uh, the, 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 the unbelievable decision to kneel during the national anthem of the country's anthem that defeated the Confederacy. It makes absolutely no sense. They almost lost the game as well. They won by one point. They kneeled for the flag that defeated the Confederacy. I know that the average college student's historical knowledge is lost but how in the world do you not recognize the cognitive dissonance? The idea that you should have a, uh, a kneeling situation during the national anthem because you disagree with something that is going on in America is patently absurd. It's evidence of how dumb Colin Kaepernick is of how dumb many of the supporters of Colin Kaepernick are that you can't even make a cogent case for your decision making without alienating the vast majority of people who are actually out there that might otherwise support your cause. It's never been easier for a player to get on social media and address his political persuasions. It's never been easier for a player to talk to the media after a game and say exactly what he feels about any issue under the sun. Why in the world would you decide to protest during the national anthem of the country that defeated the Confederacy. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Absolutely zero sense. It's illogical. It's not intelligent. And I got to tell you, it's time for people who are reasonably intelligent to start to hold others accountable and say, have whatever political opinion you want. Kneeling during the national anthem is nonsensical. Kisses to all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. If you enjoy it, share it. Go to my friends at thehomeloanexpert.com. Get pre-qualified for a mortgage in five minutes. I got television in 20 minutes. I'll be on FS1. Go put it on. Lock it in. We're back from a one-week break. This is Outkick the Show. My name is Clay Travis. I'll be live on television in 20 minutes. Then I'll be live on radio tomorrow from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP. See y'all. Love you. Thank you, Facebook.